Well, John Rush, glad to have you in Minnesota, the it's land of uh, the Vikings. Land of uh, 10,000 lakes, the oh, land yeah. of Mall of America, the land of the greatest state fair in yes. the United States. Oh, yeah. This is your favorite state, right? Home of former Governor Jesse Ventura, <laughs> whose hand I shook as a as a five-year-old. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, my sister's choir, Armstrong, o- over yeah. near Plymouth, uh, She her, their choir sang. How long were you here in Minnesota? We lived here until I was 11. Yeah. Yeah, but my sister's like... Uh, all three of my sisters graduated high school from here. Um, and then, yeah, moved to Orlando after that. So, yeah, you've remained a Vikings fan. And, yep. Um, it's, I cheated on the Timberwolves, though. You did? I With did. who? Kind of anywhere where I lived. When I moved <laughs> to Orlando, I did. Like, basketball, I've been kind of like a wayward fan, but the Vikings. Yes, you never swayed. So, like, when the Bu- Tampa Bay Buccaneers won a Super Bowl, I was an eighth grader, I think, was is the math. And I didn't switch. I stayed Vikings no matter what. Not the time yeah. with Tom Brady, before that. No, before yeah. that. Yeah, yeah their yeah. first their first yeah. one. And, and it was their first ever Super Bowl. Yeah. And it was a very unlikely team uh, to do it. Kind of like when the Minnesota Vikings won the Super Bowl. <laughs> this year this with year, Sam Darnold. In yeah. the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. Well, people are like, uh, what podcast did I just click into? Is this yes. about church? Uh, you uh, served at Elevation for a number of years recently. Yep, five years. Yeah, and now you have kind of transitioned working with Theosu. Yeah. And doing a lot of traveling. One of the things that I think is um, something that you're known for, you post a lot on social media about, is Fortnite, video games. Yep. You kind of use that as an evangelism tool, which I think yeah. for many of us, again, maybe there's people listening that are, are still trying to figure out what Fortnite is. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of pastors and church leaders that are wondering, okay, my kids play it yeah. or some of the people in my youth group play it, but you actually, yeah. you consider this part of your ministry. Yeah. Local church guy, like on staff, 15 years, 10, 10 years at a church in Rockford, Illinois, five years at, at elevation. And I've, my wife and I feel like God's putting us into more of a season of evangelism, entrepreneurship, um, getting to take more of a, a, a 30,000 foot view on, on working on the church when we've been working in the church. And so very much so still believe the local church is the hope of the world. And it's where really, you know, all of evangelism efforts, we want people to land. Um, and now we're just kind of taking a different route and it's a, uh, it's a big faith move. And, uh, video game industry is a sector of content and culture that is vastly unreached compared to, you know, even, you know, YouTube for, for example, or like lifestyle vlogging, you know, we got Cole LeBrant, we got these Christians out there, <laughs> Jefferson Bethke, people right. who are like doing that. But when it comes to Christian figures in gaming, you can't name you can't name any that are have uh, platforms of uh, any real size, and yet it's where Gen Z and Gen Alpha are spending the majority of their time. Not just in um, not just in the United States, but around around the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think that some of the the reasons why maybe that is 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 obviously you have a big focus, right? Like yeah. in, in a game, you're focused on it, whereas like other YouTubes people can focus on their life and their it's yeah. it's kind of a part of their life i think in in gaming at least in my perspective and again i'm i'm not as uh, big of a, a gamer as i once was when i was 12 and 13 but in some ways it's kind of a, a an alternate ego an alternate identity mm-hmm. and where i think a lot of kids go to escape maybe the realities of home they yeah. are can pretend to be somebody they're not they have a, right. a screen name a username and so in some ways i think you have a lot of anonymous people that are not truly who they are but then on the other side you have people that are probably more open and more um vulnerable because they're they've kind of they're they're less afraid to be yeah. maybe who they want to be. Yep. Is that what you've seen to be true? Yeah, I mean, one of the things, I mean, this is brand new for us. So, I mean, August of 2024, we launched into this. So we're just moving a million miles an hour by faith, you know. But you've been gaming this. for a while. I've been gaming yeah. for a while, but but really, and and and, and was fortunate enough to, to have gotten to build some foundation of this, like within Elevation and yeah. so much great things to say about the way that Pastor Steven leads and just the team there. Um, but really felt like at the end of the day, the, the scope of the vision and the need was beyond just what suited the needs of a local church. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and, um, so one of the things I do now is I'll drop into a game of Fortnite where there's like four players sc- squads and I'll go in without friends and I'll get matched with random people and we start talking and I talk to them about Jesus while we're shooting aliens and shooting each other. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of what I've seen is what you said, which is people are very open because it's not their real name. My, my real name is on there, John Rush. Um, and, um, or if anyone listening, John W. Key Rush, Epic ID, if you want to play Fortnite. Um, and, um, but yeah, we shared Jesus. And so now what my team is doing is we're taking those clips and we're utilizing them in short form and creating a lot of great 
evangelism conversation starters, just hearing it. The first one that I posted was just this kid from England, 14. Um, I know that because he offered that information. I didn't ask him, you know, trying to be, when it's a right. minor, you're trying to be, you right. know, and, and he was just, we just had a good conversation about how he believes he's a Christian, but he doesn't go to church and he doesn't read the Bible. And so we just talk about that. And then I was just like, hey, have you heard of this thing called version? And so he's, I just taught him how to download version while we're playing Fortnite, you know, and there's one kid, but then that one video, you know, I think on my social media, you know, like 20,000 people have seen it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's cool to see the ripple effect of what we can do on a live stream in a lobby and then how short form social media can kind of amplify it. Yeah. I mean, it's so interesting because I think social media has changed the dynamic of in-person events entirely. Yeah. I think you have two very different routes to where social media can actually be a driver, more the traditional marketing sense, which right. drives you to. Like if you, in the church context, social media drives people to your church, to your your youth services, right. to, to experience attendance. But the other side of it is actually the in-person events become this thing you capture. Right. And they become something that becomes your content on social right. media. And obviously it can fuel both of those and it yeah. be, can be a very strong engine. But I, I find that you know you could you could be interviewing somebody on the street, yeah, and it's just you and them. But that can turn into a million people watching it. Yep. Or maybe you say, "Oh, our church isn't very big, and you know we don't have the big conference and the big auditorium." Mm -hmm. But you capture it in the right way, your small group. Yeah. That content could reach millions of people. And yeah. so again, we're kind of at this this season and stage of social media to where all of the I don't, I don't know what the right word is, but like all of the history and all of like you, you can start it and, and go really big right away. You don't yeah. need like, oh, well, I need a big budget and I need a right. big, you know, team or I need all these yeah. things. You, you can right away start turning your small groups into content. You can turn your yeah. video games into content. What right. got you into that? Like what made you think maybe I could start recording myself yeah. and p posting this? Because again, yeah. I'm sure it wasn't just like, oh, that's, that's just what I do. It had to be something that spurred you to do that yeah well i mean you know the the, the thing about um gaming is still for anyone that's not gen z or gen alpha um there's still a slight stigma or lack of understanding around it um but I, by the time that you know our kids are having this conversation it's going to be as normal as golf it's going to be referred to as golf you know when right. you hear guys talking about golf no one goes you golf you know they go right. oh golf i yeah. might not golf but it's golf you know yeah. or i was just watching on the plane um, I think, I think the movie just called biker gang. It was that like biker gang movie. And, uh, um, I can't remember any, I'm blanking on all the names of the actors, but you know, just type uh, biker gang, new movie, 2023. But it was kind of about kind of this, the, the uptick of like, m like chop gangs and motorcycle gangs and all this stuff. Well, yeah. At, in the, in the beginning of every, you know, hobby thing, subculture was this like freakish, like, what is this? And right. now if you talk to someone, you go, yeah, I'm a 42 year old man and I ride motorcycles. You're like, cool, man. But if you hear a 42 year old man say, I play Fortnite, you're like, huh? Yeah. But it's important for the church. We always talk about not being on the back end of culture. This is one of those moments. Mm -hmm. This is one of those moments where, as pastors, as parents, we get to say, are we going to be a victim again to uh, not embracing what we don't fully understand? What's a native language, um, video games? Um, to to so many uh, kids, you know, upwards of seventy percent of Gen Z are playing a video game every single day, um, uh, and in mobile games, even in um, you know some of these uh, unreached people groups in in the world, you know, places like China, um, places in like the Middle East, you know, video games are very prevalent. So this is an entry point of culture and conversation um, to be a digital missionary, if you will, to mm -hmm. use digital means to spark gospel conversations. Um, this this is our chance to not be behind the ball. And what I think about video games is it's actually the purest form. And by pure, I don't mean like a moral. I just mean it's the actual the the best case of social media every other bit of social media the social part really comes after the media right. but video games you're having a social experiment now granted it's not in person it's not face to face but you're talking with other people you're playing games even for the people that do play single player games they're posting about it they're talking to people but the majority of gaming use yeah, is done in a social yeah. thing and so to me how did I think of doing it? I, just the same way that I breached football players, you know, for the last 15 years is, you know, I go to a football game, talk about football. I care about, you know, or even a better one, because I actually like football, baseball. I don't really care about baseball, but I learn about baseball as a 
creative context. I'd recruit leaders to my youth team who love baseball. I go, we need that kid. He's going to be a D one pitcher. And, and if he comes a hundred people from his school will come, you know? So to me, it's not like a, I even don't like Logan, this whole idea of like reach the nerds. It's not nerdy to be a gamer oh, in Gen Z and Gen no, Alpha. Not, not We're not a, oh, you're some people, you know, they're like, oh, so you're here to reach antisocial kids. I go, the best gamers I know are athletes. You know, one of the outreach things that, that I've helped churches do before is, is help, um, high school esports. uh, uh, leagues, um, cause most high schools and most colleges now have an esports presence. Mm-hmm. It's a gateway into STEM, um, jobs and, and things like that. Um, we'll host like tryouts at the lunch at the, at lunchtime. I can't tell you how many times the basketball team will roll up and be better at rocket league than the rocket league team. So there's not this like, you know, Bronny James, you know, like, you know, he'll probably go down. I'm not trying to hate on him, but probably is, will go down as a more successful Fortnite player than he is a basketball player. He made money playing Fortnite before he ever made money playing basketball. You know, uh, Kyler um, Murray uh, yeah. in the Cardinals. He was, there was a big controversy a few years ago because he got film time out of his contract so that he could devote it to his Call of Duty streams. So I, to me, I really see this as an opportunity for churches to, and, 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 and pastors to put our money where our mouth is and, and not, again, 20 years from now at a conference being like, Church is constantly lagging behind culture. This this is one of those moments. I think there's probably a lot of people that feel great, like awesome. I'm happy for you. I love that you're doing right. that. I mean, what to maybe the youth pastor listening, or again, you are you're on staff at a church, kind of doing yeah. some of this stuff. But there is the the truth that no, there's there's church to have on weekends and yeah. there's youth and there's meetings yeah. and just like Kyler Murray, oh, yeah. sorry, you know, coach, I can't do this. Yeah. There's maybe youth pastor right now or or someone on the team, again, maybe not even youth, maybe yeah. another area that goes, oh, I'm going to go to my pastor and say, give me 10 hours a week to play video games. Yeah. That conversation probably will go how you expect it to go. <laughs> right, right, but right. But what would be maybe your advice to those who are, are feeling like, okay, this could be something yeah. that I, I actually want to explore or... Uh, maybe, maybe again, there's other questions I have that I'll get to later, but like, yeah. h- how, how would you approach starting this in a church to say, okay, I'm talking to people, but they could be in England. They could be around the yeah. world. I have a local community that I need to take care of. How do you, yeah. how did you weigh that? And how do you talk to other people who are weighing that as well? Yeah. Well, I, I think I'm, I'm really passionate about the offices of church. I think, I think, you know, to me, I think that is the number one, if I could pour my life into one thing that I think would better the, the church it would be helping us clarify, you know, what does a teacher do? What does an apostle do? What does an evangelist do? E- even just let's get super granular. What does a local church do versus an evangelist? I think that most, um, I-, I think we've got to get really clear on that. So to me, I think this is way more of an evangelism effort. I would say that this is something that churches probably should be looking to support people doing these things versus trying to emulate themselves. Um, I am actually really against playing video games at youth group or at church. Because to me, I go, if you get a kid to church in 2024, or, or if you're contextualizing this to adults, the average uh, age of a gamer in America is a 36, uh, 36 year old man, you know, 64% of Gen Z girls play um, some type of, of video game um, on a weekly basis as well. Um, so um, I, I would say if you get someone to church in 2024, let church be church. You know, I think this is where we've really, church to me is where we worship God. And we, we teach people how to follow Jesus. Like, that's what it's about. Um, so what I, what I tell youth pastors to do in churches, I say, I don't want you playing uh, video games at youth group. I want you playing video games with youth group. So it's a perfect compliment to take what you're doing on a Wednesday or on a Sunday and play that out Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And this is the thing. These kids are playing these video games anywhere. Anyway, they might as well be doing it with their youth leader. They might as well be doing it with their youth friends. And so I think the biggest application for churches is one, supporting people who are in the space doing it, um, evangelism, uh, evangelists, um, and, and and two, utilizing it more in a small group relational way, not implementing it into program. You know, don't build, just my opinion, I don't, you only have two hours of, a, a week with these people, let's not have them spend it playing Xbox. They can do that at home. And most gamers, most people prefer to play at their home setup, you know, anyway. And, and so the exception to that would be, I, I'm working with a number of churches to where there is a conference level version of this, where like, I think it's appropriate maybe for a conference where we can build you a little esports lab, or we can create some really cool interactive, um, creative openers. One of the things I've gotten to help churches do is say, Hey, let's like not do the like rock, paper, scissors and drinking Mountain Dew through a sock. What if we had a Fortnite tournament or a Rocket League tournament 
on the big screen in front of all your kids. And so that even if they're not playing, they have something worth worth watching. So I think I think that's my first one. One, one of the things that I'm actually in the process of right now is is starting a nonprofit and starting to raise funds uh, to start essentially a digital network that connects people in areas through gaming content. And then we'll we'll help uh, set them up with partner churches locally in the area. So so it, it, it almost seems to me like it's like fellowship of Christian athletes for like esports or something. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So yeah. well, there you go. There's your there's your sponsor ad right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I what about like people who have teenagers? They yeah. have youth right now, and I, I just think there's again there's probably a lot of people listening in our audience that go. I just, I don't know really anything about this. And, you know, you hear in politics, you know, violent video games, they're, yeah. they're one of the reasons we're seeing, you know, they'll, they'll equate it to like mass shooters and stuff, yeah. which again, I, I don't, I don't think the research I've, I've looked at yeah. it and I've talked to some psychologists about it. I don't know if the research really bears itself out there. Yeah. Um, but I, th I still think there's a fear. If you said, Hey, I'm a youth pastor and I'm going to play basketball yeah. with some of my students, right. most pastors and parents would feel very comfortable yeah. when it comes towards. I'm going to be online. And yeah. and I've quoted this book a number of times recently, but The Anxious Generation by Jonathan Haidt, um, he, he talks about how we're very, um, like, try to be coddling to people in person, but we let our kids do whatever they want to do online. And sure. so there is a lot of freedom in here, but there, I think there's that stewardship component to, like, we don't want to take advantage of that freedom, but to your point, they're there. Like, how would you, like, advising our young people yeah. to our youth group, our students— Hey, video games are fine. They're great. Well, there's there's parents that disagree with you. Yeah. There's parents that are mad that you're that they now have an excuse to play yeah. more video games. Well, because I'm playing with my youth pastor, right. and I'm it's an evangelism tool. Yeah. Now you're in some ways it could feel, and I'm not saying it is, but it could feel like it's working against parents 100%. and the will they want for their children. Yeah. How have you managed that tension? Yeah. Well, I mean, I I also have a very um, pro parent just outlook on life. You know, we have three kids and. Um, it's just the older I get and I have become a parent, the more I realize that maybe even as a young youth pastor, I didn't value that, you know, partially is because I had such a broken home that like, I didn't even really have a worldview of family. Youth group was, youth group was what, you know, saved my, like I'd really use youth group to save and change my life. So as a young youth pastor, I was probably a little heavy hand, heavier handed on that and didn't do as much, but I, I just, my whole worldview of like from government to church to everything is like, Pro parenting, you know, I even as I'm a huge youth ministry guy, um, and and there's you know especially in some more reform spaces, there's some people who believe that you know if parents were just doing their job, being the priest of their household, we wouldn't even need a youth group, you know. And I'm like, I, I don't know that I fully believe all of that, you know, but I'm like, I see it, like I have so more in that realm. And so I say first off, like parents, parents are are the ones who should be leading their kids, you know, 100. Um, percent. My, you know, in our home you know, we, we try to be very serious about screen time and I don't see my kids having a phone until they have a driver's license. That's what we've talked about. I don't see, you know, my five-year-old, you know, having her own console, you know, but every now and then she wants to play Fortnite or Lego Fortnite with me. And, you know, we're, we're kind of watching that. Um, I just think at the end of the day, we have to make a decision as Christians. Do we ever really believe that we're going to go to some non-digital utopia again? And if we're going to do it, let's go, dude. I'm down. Like, let's burn it all down. Like, let's, like, let's all, who's, who's first? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, who's yeah. first? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if we're not going to do that, then, 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 then let's stop, let's stop being victims and let's stop freaking out and let's actually start to create principles, theology, methodology, core practices around how to integrate with these digital means. Cause, cause let me tell you something, VR is coming. We think, we think, we think this is bad. You combine AI with real VR which real VR, when it's there, will make Apple Vision Pro look like a, 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 a rock in a caveman's hand. Right. I mean, you're talking about fully immersive stuff that will include pornography. You're, you're talking, it, it'll, it'll improve, uh, it'll um, include kinetic um, adaptations, meaning it'll work you out while you're in there. I mean, I mean, we like better, ready, ready player one type stuff. hundred percent. That movie, the that, Spielberg that's where, movie. That's yeah. where it's going. Yeah. Now that might not happen I would be shocked if that doesn't happen in our lifetime. We might yeah. be we might be old men, yeah. but it's coming. So I I think my my thing to the church and to parents is like, okay, if we're not going to burn it all down, then let's teach our kids how to ex co co coexist within it. Um and so I think definitely you got to honor the parents and and there's so many great resources, you know. One of a great partner in this space is is a group called Parent Protect. You know, they're a group of Christian guys that's made a 
a non-Christian front-facing content because they actually integrate with a lot of public schools. It's all about internet safety, digital citizens, uh, citizenry. Um, and, and, and basically they have tutorials on their site about how to use all these games and use it well and, and all of that stuff. And the last thing I'd say, Logan, is that I think if we're going to have a serious conversation about the, the, the potential harm of, of video games, then we better do it about travel sports because I know just as many kids whose, whose anxiety is out, out, just skyrocketing because of overuse in sports and, and, and an over uh, stress about getting a 4.17. So I'm like, let, I think what's easy for us to do as humans or human nature to find a scapegoat. And we, we try to find the easiest out. And I think it'd just be really easy to blame Minecraft for all of our kids problem. When I go they're in seven baseball leagues and like their physical body wasn't built for that. And they feel a pressure, you know, do we even, do they even want to play baseball anymore? And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to, conflate that one is better than the other. I'm just saying, I think when you look at the spectrum of what's causing anxiety to teenagers, I don't think video games is, 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 is the lone wolf, you know, X factor. Yeah, I agree. It is not. I think the, the counterpoint though would probably be the connection to our physical bodies. You know, if, yeah. if we are only doing sports and only being active, well, our bodies in general are probably going to be much healthier than if we were only doing video games, only being at home. Well, you know? I, to the to the overuse uh, stat, there's actually a lot of research about how over overactivity in, in in young athletes is causing to extreme like actual uh, bad health benefits. Like certainly having cardiovascular and certainly you know playing. Like I'm all I'm all for playing sports. I, I guess I just want us to say, let's be intellectually honest about all the things that are plaguing our kids instead of just thinking, oh, the screens, you know, it, 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 it's going to do it because I can show, we can go stat for stat. And I feel like this is like 20, such 2024, you know, where I'm like, I can show you studies that say that video game use is really good for your mental acuity. Right. And I can also show you studies that say that playing too much baseball is bad for your body long term. And, and I, I don't, at the end of the day, I don't think it's about going stat for stat. I think it's about us saying as parents and then as pastors coming alongside parents to say, man, how do we create a holistic picture of our kids? What's coming into their bodies? What's coming out? Are we really stewarding our kids or are, I just think, I guess what I'm trying to say ultimately, Logan, is I think there's so many areas of culture that still runs the Christian household instead of a biblical worldview. And I think that, that screens are the scapegoat. But I think if we look at dating habits and money habits and communication habits, gender roles, so many things we've actually in our houses surrendered to the culture instead of creating a biblical worldview. And I think I think churches can do a lot more to help parents actually even know where to begin with that. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and I don't mean to keep pressing on this, but I no, think, I like it because it, it is what people think yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think that you, you talk about screens in general, and I, and I think the what. I, I talked to a child um, psychologist from the University of Minnesota on the podcast uh, a few months ago, and she was talking about how screens, obviously, they definitely have an effect, but what is on them is very important as 100%. well. You know, and I think that the the what we're doing, the you mentioned, you know, dating and all this stuff. I saw a stat that's going around right now on Instagram that people keep showing is the percentage of people who are meeting their partner online mm -hmm. and it just is like a pretty flat goes up a little bit and from I 2020 that, I, graph, I mean yeah. it's like 70 percent now yeah. i mean it's 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 unfathomable from maybe what a generation ago would have expected but i think if you're to ask you know people in high school right now or people in in college probably specifically they'd right. say yeah what are, you, what are you talking about that's that's the first step you meet yeah. them online you meet them on an app you meet them on those places yeah you're you're maybe lucky or the few to meet to meet somebody in a classroom but yeah. it's like i met that person in my class on a dating app before i even knew they were in my class like yeah, that yeah, but yeah. that's a crazy thing i think for yeah. for this generation to think that that's happening with people yeah. and so again i would i would just encourage those yeah. to to realize that it's happening right it's there and it's up to us to figure out what are those things that we can do. And then to your point, how can we then redeem some of those things? I mean, right. I've, I felt the same tension with social media. I've talked about it on the podcast before, but I deleted it for two years, every account, every yeah. account on social media for two years, because I was kind of that, you know, throw the phones in the water. Yeah. Like it's destroying my life. It's not helping me. Right. And then after two years, I thought, okay, I can either you know, pee in the Cheerios yeah. or I can try to redeem what this is and do my best yeah. to do that. And that's what the podcast, obviously, I mean, this, this year we had the beginning of this year, we had 
two thousand followers on the Talking yeah. Church platform. Now it's over sixty thousand. It's amazing, you know. But I kind of had to die to myself in some ways of yeah. like I wish it was different. Yeah. And I think that to me that seems to be your point. Like yeah. we can we can get angry at this all yeah. all we want, and if we want to go be Amish and and change the culture, mm -hmm. and we can effectively do that, let's do it. Yep. But it doesn't seem to be the route we're going. And, and I love what you mentioned, particularly at River Valley, we care a ton about the unreached, particularly the unreached yes. all around the world. I mean, yep. in our neighborhoods, we might have access to people; they might have church. But you know, I, I was. Um, I was talking to somebody from the Philippines and he told me, I said, how'd you get saved? And he said, Justin Bieber's album, uh, Purpose. He said, it came out. And th at the end, he said a prayer. Yeah. And he said, I, I didn't know who he was praying to. Yeah. And so I looked it up and I'd never read the Bible. No one ever yeah. told me about Jesus. And he said, I started reading the Bible because of that album. Right. And I got saved from that record. Yeah. And I'm there. And again, all the critics, I'm sure there's so many people that are, yeah. oh, that's, he's not real. He's not doing this. And again, his salvation is between him and God. You know, it's like, I, I, I trust what God has done in his life. Right. I do. And I, yeah. I have no reason to not. Um, but look at that story. Like, that's yeah. crazy. I'm, I'm, this is a real dude that I'm talking to that said, yeah. I got saved from a Justin Bieber album. Right. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm sure yeah. that you have stories like that too about yeah. video games. Well, I, I love what you, I think what you're bringing up is a multi-layered uh, cognitive approach to issues that, that I think we need to apply more as Christians where, you know, cause we take something now, I think truth is, truth is binary. Who is Jesus? And, and these things are, are truth, but, but someone's life is, is a lot more layered, just like all of our lives, you know? And so to me, you know, I have two, two girls and somehow my five-year-old, um, and I have a baby boy son, but he's three months. He doesn't know about anything yet. Um, I don't even know if he knows I exist because his mom is everything to him. Um, <laughs> my brother, he, he just said that about Beckham, my nephew. He's like, he's just started the phase where he doesn't want anything to do with me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, so my five-year-old somehow already just knows about Taylor Swift and knows these things. And, and instead of me saying she is bad, she is good. Let's cut the whole, let's cut the whole thing open. And I can, I can intellectually agree in, in, in giving credit to the sovereignty of God and his spirit. I can say, man, if someone came and told me they saw something about Taylor Swift being a, a Christian or whatever, because that is that claim, and that led them to Jesus, I can say, boom, that's authentic. I can also say that, hey, there's some noticeable areas of her life that mean that she's not a good Christian role model, you know? And then at the same time, I can also say to my five-year-old, I'm okay if you listen to some of her music here's how, you know, I'm not actually with a five-year-old, but you know, to my kids, all three of these things can be true at once. And I think this is the type of conversations we need to be having with our kid, these multi-layered, let's, let's cut the thing open. And, you know, I also think these are some of the conversations we need to be having at church. You know, mm -hmm. my, um, a guy you would love out in uh, California, his name's Ben Graves, uh, just youth pastor crushing it. Uh, he's, he's at his dad's church. Their church has been in uh, San Diego for like 20 years, just doing just really awesome things. One of the things they do in their youth service is um, in between like worship and the message is they play like a 90 second TikTok reel or short that kind of went viral about some kind of worldview. And then they have a student and a leader come kind of respond to it from a biblical worldview. And it's not perfect and it's not like, but it's, it's teaching kids in real time to look at things multifaceted Yes, with the truth of Jesus, but more than just like it's bad, it's good. It's there, there's a lot going on there, and that's how I view video games. I'm, I'm in as many conversations telling people to stop playing video games or stop playing certain video games, as I am teaching some to start playing video games so they can relate with their kids. And you and 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 so I don't think it's I view. I, th this is ultimately my belief about these things is is that is that the people we're trying to reach are here. Mm -hmm. And as long as they're here, mm -hmm. I'm going to be here. Right. And if, if someone doesn't have the, if they don't have the mental health to be able to stand, like do this, great. I'll go pray for me, send me, you know, send, send this podcast. There are people that will go. And I don't think any Christian would have, would have the, uh, would be okay with us circling a geographical spot on a map and saying, God will never move there. It's too dangerous for us to go. No, we're, we're, we, we, we're grateful for the thousands upon thousands of missionaries that go out that even River Valley sends out that are going to places most people wouldn't go uh, to reach people where they are. So I'm like, if we're, if, if people are going to be here, I'm going to be here. And if mm -hmm. people are going to be playing video games, there's going to be a light pointing to Jesus. And I mean, 
one of the things that me and my friend Taylor are talking about is uh, we might do a content series where we start a church in Grand Is that Grand Global Auto. Senior Pastor? Yeah, Global Senior yeah, Pastor, okay. Daddy's Just, Church, Taylor yeah, Ransom, yeah. Taylor Ransom. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to start a church in Grand Theft Auto. And now, is that what I want every youth group kid to be playing on? No, I'm not trying to reach youth group kids with that. I'm trying to reach the kids who should be in youth group, you know, who I want to connect to that. And um, we just feel, we've been going to these conventions too. I went to TwitchCon. Twitch is the, live, is the number one live streaming app in the world. And it's a lot of gaming. It's also a lot of pornography because what these, uh, what, what these uh, porn companies and porn stars have realized is they can't stream actual porn on, the, on this content, but they'll stream scantily clad linking to their other porn. So while kids are going to this website to watch someone play Minecraft, they're stumbling upon people in, in bikinis. I was just at TwitchCon and in the kind of like partners influencer lounge, there's, there's a few hundred people there, but I mean, you know, you're seeing a lot of, and hearing people talk about how like, oh yeah, I'm an OnlyFans model. Oh yeah, I'm an OnlyFans model. So to some parents listening, they're like, well, that's why my kid's not going to be on Twitch. I fully support your decision to say that. Pro I'd probably do the same thing with my kids. What I'm saying is there's a lot of parents, you know, 50% of Gen Z grew up in a broken home. Right now, the projections for Gen Alpha is that 40% of them low end are going to grow up in a non-normative home. So either um, one parent, you know, a, a, a homosexual parent uh, relationship or an adopted, like there's just a lot of dysfunction. And so they're, they're going to be on Twitch. So I'm going to be there on Twitch. There's going to be a guy talking about Jesus on there. And my hope, Logan, is to not just be the the logo of it. My My real hope is to help disciple and raise up Gen Z and Gen Alpha future influencers to just dominate the space for Jesus. I'm just haunted and overwhelmed by this question, Logan, is what if the next Mr. Beast knows Jesus? What if the next Mr. Beast is a part of River Valley Church or whoever's listening their church? Mm -hmm. And what if that those gifts, that influence is being used to glorify God? And I would even say, let's not, let's not stop praying for Jimmy. You know, what if Mr. Beast came to Christ right now? Mm -hmm. And not just came to Christ, because this is where I want to see more, like, again, I don't know Justin. I don't know the people where he went to church. I don't want just celebrities to have a faith experience. I want them to get connected to local church. I don't know Russell Brand. I think it's great. He's talking about Jesus. You need a pastor, dude. You need to be in church. You need a community. You need to be sitting with brothers and sisters who are unimpressed by you. I, I, I'm all about celebrities and influence. I pray for it. I've been a part of sharing Jesus with some really you know, uh, uh, influential YouTubers. But to me, it's still all about the local church. That's what I'm praying for, Logan. It's not just salvation, but discipleship of these influencers so that we can see 360 kind of life change. Because we've seen influencers come to Christ, but they don't know how to apply it. And then they end up either waning away or a lot of their 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 um, experience with Jesus gets kind of muddled with like a universalist approach. So Obviously, I'm excited about it. No, I mean, I'm glad you're passionate about it. I think that you have to be yeah. in, in, in order to do that. And, you, you know, that was one of my questions that I wanted to ask is like, in that space, it is filled with a lot of evil. It is filled yeah. with a lot of sin. And I think for anyone who feels called to be a part of a community, I mean, whether it be in Islam or whether it be, you know, we want to reach prostitutes or we want to reach um, people that are in a place that is full of darkness. Like, yeah. you, you have to have a passion for it, but you also have to have a... a both a prayer life and a prayer covering that I think is far greater than than people in other situations. And so I hope, yeah. and, and again, maybe we can talk about this more after, but I, I hope that there are people that are praying yeah. for you frequently that, yeah. and that you continue to dive deeper into what God has for you because, yeah. um, you know, you talk about GTA and you talk about those things like I— I don't understand it all, yeah. but I, just like with missionaries in other places, I want to support anybody who's going to preach the gospel and go into the dark places. Yeah. Um, but I think sometimes, you know, it's like William Carey, you know, he said, uh, they said, let the heathen take care of themselves when yeah. they want to go to China. Yeah. And he said, I'll venture down, you hold yeah. the ropes. Right. You know, and I, and I hope that there are people that are holding the ropes for you. I know you. Yeah. there are, there's many yeah. circles, but for anyone who's even considering that yeah. going in these places, like... Man, I mean, I look, I look at these young girls that are feeling like they have to go do OnlyFans mm -hmm. and and do this because that's their their future because they can make a lot of money and and right. I mean, I, again, I I don't know much about that space, but from what I have seen from from some believers who've told me the stats is I think it's like ninety some percent don't make any money at all. Yeah, and they've just sold their bodies and now they're now now they're even more ashamed. Yeah. And of course, there's the the one percent that yeah. that are on Twitch that are sharing all that are the influencers. Yeah, and so again, I think there's this 
I, I love that idea from the guy in San Diego. Like, hey, let me let me share. This is what yeah. you're seeing. And yeah. I, again, I think there's a lot of pastors and preachers that probably could do this. We were talking right before we started. I think every church should probably have a podcast. Yeah. Now, you might not have 10,000 listeners, but it might be your congregation. It might be your youth students yeah. that say, pastor, respond to this video. Give yeah. me your take on this opinion. Yeah. It might not even be need to be public. You could just do it, do a conversation and Absolutely. do it in church, have a Q&A. Yeah. But I, I mean, I think... I think that the world is moving so fast and what you said earlier, like let's yeah. not let it go by us because we've missed it, but let's be very consecrated in what yeah. God is doing. Because again, just like those celebrity Christians, John, I don't think anyone is, I don't think anyone is is too too close to God to if they drift, yeah. they can't be sucked into it. Yep. It's his mercies 100%. are new every morning. Give me this day, this daily yep. bread, yeah. you know, and what God is doing in you and what God is doing in others who are listening to this that are inspired. Um, but I'm like, man, we cannot, we can't let it last one day, Yeah, you know? And, uh, that's why that you know I've I've talked to a lot of celebrities that are Christian. I think there's more than we realize. I think they just have a, a weight to try to figure out how do I steward this platform? Totally. You know, I've talked to a number of pro athletes, yeah. a number of people that they're just, they're trying to, they're trying to figure it out. You yeah. know, they, they want to do their best. And again, unfortunately, like you said, many, they, they kind of go into this universalist, like, oh, I'm a Christian, yeah. but I, I'm right. also a, you know, a, a spokesperson for the Democrat party, <laughs> whatever. You yeah, know? And yeah, you're like, yeah. okay. And again, I know both sides. It's like, I don't know if that would, that always works, but, um, You've given me probably a lot more to think about today than yeah. even to land on. But if there's anything I missed, anything that you would say to maybe those who are learning about this industry yeah. or, again, you've given us a lot of uh, positive opportunities and a lot of warnings as well. Yeah. But I just want to give you a last last word. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I in no way am a spokesperson for the for video games or the video games industry. Jeff, you are. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I, I, I'm saying uh, I'm, a, I'm a spokesperson for – if they exist, there needs to be yes. Christians there, you know? And, but I'm saying you're one of yeah. the few in this space that I feel like is taking it seriously. Yeah. And that's why I want to talk about it. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I feel that way. It does feel, you know, I, I will say like, I have, a, I have a good friend, uh, Grant Diamond, uh, his, uh, Twitch name is preacher guy. Like he, he took the jump. He was, he was like the first that I saw do this well. Um, he was a church planner, then a campus pastor. Um, and then in COVID really started streaming and just saw like the ministry. And so I think there's a, there's a couple that have proven the model, but holistically, I'm just going to be honest. I'll share my frustration with you, Logan. This is an area where I feel like the church is and Christians are turning a blind eye to. And I'm like, if we don't bring the light into this space, it's going to keep consuming our kids in darkness. And, and I think even what you said to the alter ego part, I think that's all of social media is like, we've got to, we've got to be there. We've got to show up both digitally in the content and in the, in the games. And then to these conventions and these influencer spaces and, um, but yeah, I mean, there's some like Dino, J Dino from Arc, you know, like just just invested into what we're doing, and like he's such a great, you know. You I, know, he was my dad's roommate in Bible college, right? I didn't know that. Yeah, That's, yeah. he's a legend, dude. I love him, and I love Dylan, and you know, and then you know Nathan and Brian at the ASU have been so helpful, and Lyle Phillips in, in Nashville has given me some great ideas and covering, and you know, um, I I I definitely there are some who who even if they don't get it. They, they, they're trying to get it, you know, but really what I, what I hope to do by the time I'm, I'm 40 is to have like a, uh, X-Men house, like where we can, in a Christian way, raise up the next digital influencers and entertainers, and maybe even in a way that's equitable, um, for kingdom projects, you know, there's so much money to be made mm -hmm. that we could be routing into missions that we could be routing into the local church. And then, and obviously to take care of who these young people are, you know? Um, but the, the problem is, 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 um, you know, I just don't think there's a lot, if you're a Christian kid and you want to be a YouTuber, I don't know where you look to in the church. And I want to try to change that and, um, and, and provide more of a discipleship. Because at the end of the day, I've just realized like, all I want to do with my life is be a youth pastor. You know, even if I lead my own church someday, to me, I'm just, now I'm just pastoring the kid, you know, cause I've been a youth pastor long enough to where like most of my students are adults now, you know? And so, um, my, my whole, like first Corinthians four, um, just when Paul's writing, um, um, to, uh, to the church in Corinth and he's, he's just talking about like, man, I long to be with you, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and he's, and, and he's, and he's saying, um, you know, you have a, you have a thousand teachers in Christ, but you don't have many fathers. He's like, I'm going to be your dad in, in the faith. Uh, but I can't be there right now. And this is almost like the most beautiful part to me. 
but I'm sending my son, Timothy, and, and he's going to show you how to live, live like Christ. And I just think that, I mean, my deepest passion in all of this is, is multiplication, generational discipleship. This just seems, this just seems to be one of the, the, the avenues that no one else is in. And I, I've tried to fight this. I don't like being, no, I would just be vulnerable. I hate being known as a video game guy. I want to be known as the theology guy. I want to be known as the fashion guy. I want to be known as the preacher guy. Sometimes I look at my Instagram like, oh, I haven't posted a preaching clip in a while. It's just video games. Blah, blah, blah. And I and the Lord's just leading me. It's like, that's all just that's all just rubbish, you know? And so I would even say that I've in in some ways have been reluctant. You know, people might hear like, oh, you're reluctant to play video games for a job. Most of what I do isn't even playing the video games. It's like building systems around, you know, ministry around the video games and stuff. And, and I do get to do that. And let me tell you, when you're playing Fortnite, you're trying to share your testimony in Jesus and try to hit a headshot. It's actually really difficult. <laughs> and I've got three kids and I'm not even that good anymore. So, so, so you know, a lot of times, you know, yeah, I'll speak at a church uh, and someone will come 1v1 me. And I go, you'll beat me. Like I have kids, dude. Like I'm not good. I'm just there. And so um, I, I think that's just the last thing. I, at the end of the day, to me, it all just, it doesn't flow. I would say that it doesn't flow from a place of the church should be innovative. It doesn't flow from a place of um, the church needs to lead the way in technology. It doesn't flow from church needs to shape culture. All those are great. To me, the primary thing to this is we disciple people, man. Like we love people and we go to where they are mm. and, and, and we use whatever is in our means to build relationships with them. And, and it's been so cool even to see like randomly, like a lot of pastors have asked me to play Fortnite with their kids. Um, and, and, and that's a ministry to me. Like, I don't like, that's important to me that I get to be a part of someone's faith journey by helping say like, yeah, your dad might not play Fortnite, but like, I'm, I'm a guy who loves Jesus and I love the video game you do. And that helps build into the wall of their worldview of Christians and, and, and Jesus. So I really do think that what you said about like that, I don't know, like the ropes or whatever you said, it was better than what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I think that that's what it's all about to me, yeah. you know, is the relational connectivity and, and the discipleship. Yeah. Well, again, your passion for it is obvious and evident, and we didn't even get too much into your story, but knowing your story and the passion you have as to why you do this, that you can be uh, an amazing man influence in their life and helping them, whether you're in person with them or not, it's a... Uh, it's evident that that you're where you're supposed to be and uh, I continue to stand with you and just pray for you and that God would use it. And again, that others would join in the journey if they want to join in, get follow you on social, get involved if they're a gamer themselves, jump into the squad with you. But um, yeah, thanks for sharing a lot of maybe new information for people who, yeah. who didn't know about it. And of course, sharing your heart into who you are. You're more than video game guy, but uh, you blessed us today, John. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I just, you know, I don't say this for lip service, like River Valley has been a, a beacon in my entire life as a pastor, you know, like for the last 12 years. I mean, I've, I've driven up here, flown up here, like what, what, you know, your parents have built, what, what you're continuing to help build, like is so special uh, to me the, from the music to the events to people like Terry Parkman and, you know, Kirk and Davey and just so, so many amazing people, you know, like this, this church means a lot to me. And, uh, it's a big deal and really fun to be on this podcast. And um, if you're listening to this and you haven't subscribed or liked or shared, share share this one or or another episode without me. Uh, get this get this talking church podcast out there. Thanks, Logan. Thank you.